Cassius. Dawn of War. The following is a fan written story set shortly before and during the events of Star Wars Episode II Attack of the Clones. The following story is non canon to any and all events in the Star Wars series. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. The Galactic Republic has found itself on the brink of civil war. Every day, more and more systems declare their independence from the Republic and join with the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Chancellor Palpatine has made clear his intentions to peacefully bring an end to the conflict before it can begin. All the while, Senator Padme Amidala plans to travel to Coruscant to voice her opposition of the Military Creation Act that would see an army formed specifically for the use of the Republic. At the head of the conflict, Count Dooku has made himself known as the leader of the Separatist movement, stirring whispers of his possible evil intentions amongst the Jedi Order. Inside the walls of the Jedi Temple, young Cassius Urshan has continued to excel in his Jedi training under the tutelage of Master Kakuri Takai. Four years have passed since the former Jedi Dravok attempted to destroy the Jedi Order from within. Thanks to the efforts of Cassius and his fellow Padawans Sarah Keto and Corbin Roth, Dravok's efforts were thwarted and the Order was spared from a terrible attack. With growing tension throughout the Republic, Cassius will soon take part in events that will change the very fate of the galaxy. Chapter 1 Wake up, Cassius. We'll be arriving soon. Cassius rubbed his eyes and yawned, sitting up in his chair as the transport shuttle made its final approach to Coruscant. How long was I out? A few hours. Master Takai sat in the seat across from him, taking notes on a data pad. It'll be good to get back. Who would have thought two weeks on Ord Mantel would make you miss the food in the temple? Well, you can have your fill after you give your report to Master Dalva. I thought you were the one who handled the reports. Ordinarily, yes. But you'll have to take care of your own reports from now on. It's a lesser-known aspect of being a Jedi. Right. The shuttle landed in front of the Jedi Temple and departed as soon as Cassius and his master stepped off. Good to be home. Wonder how Corbin's been. Corbin and Master Terran are currently off-world. They were assigned to de-escalate a conflict on Andara. Man, we've been sent off-world a lot in the past few months. Are things really getting that bad? These are difficult times, Cassius. More and more systems are seceding from the Republic each day. I fear we may be heading down a dark path. What do you mean? Like, war? Possibly. We don't need to discuss this right now. Go find Master Dalva and give her your report. I'll see you later. Okay. Take care, Master. Cassius walked up the temple steps and started walking to the briefing room. Hey, you're not even going to say hi? Cassius turned around and saw Sarah walking over to him. Hey, Sarah! Good to see you! Wow, so wonderful to be in your presence. <laughs> Was that good enough? Huh, funny. Cassius smiled and hugged his friend. It really is good to see you. Feels like forever since I saw you. Two months. You and Master Takai left for Ord Mantell just before Master Drolig and I returned from the Outer Rim. What were you doing out there anyway? The Senator for Ord Mantell had been receiving death threats from his political adversaries. We were sent to keep him safe and make sure nothing happened to him. And? Did everything work out? Yep. Two-bit bounty hunter. We got him. He'll be spending the rest of his life in the comfort of a prison cell. Anything happen here while I was gone? Same old, same old. Any news on Dravok? Not that I've heard. Well, that's good. And bad. Well, let's catch up later. I need to report to Master Dalva. Okay. See you later, Cassius. Cassius waved goodbye to Sarah and walked through the halls of the temple until he reached the briefing room where Master Dalva was sitting at a computer, entering data on all incoming reports. Greetings, Padawan. I trust your mission went well? No hiccups on our end, Master. So how long were you on Ord Mantell? Two weeks. We were sent by the Council to protect Senator Colrus. He'd been receiving threats of violence from an unknown source and didn't feel his security would be sufficient to keep him safe. Master Takai and myself oversaw his transport and were present during public appearances. An attempt on his life was made, but thanks to us, it was unsuccessful. The bounty hunter has since been taken into custody, and Senator Colrus has relieved us of our services. He'll be arriving on Coruscant in a few days to attend the debates regarding the military creation proposal. Excellent work. Fill out this data pad here with any other significant details, expenses, and relevant interactions, please. 
Cassius took the data pad and sat down, entering information into the appropriate categories. Something was eating away at the back of his mind, however. He wasn't sure what it was. Maybe it was just the fact that tensions were so high in the galaxy. Whatever it was, it had been a lingering feeling in his head for a few months now. Yet it didn't feel like danger, as much as it felt like a warning. Okay, I think that's everything. Cassie's handed the data pad over to Master Dalva, who carefully looked it over and began to enter the data into the system. Thank you, Cassius. You're dismissed. Cassius bowed and left the room. Looking at his chronometer, Cassius saw the day was still fairly early. It might be a good idea to go talk to Master Drolik. Cassius walked to the training grounds looking around for Master Drolik. He wasn't there. Strange, since this was normally the time he'd be teaching his students. Instead, he saw a very young boy with blonde hair training with his master, deflecting blasts from a training remote. Cassius watched the child redirect every blast with surprising accuracy. Far more accurately than he had at that age, anyway. Cassius looked over to the right of the boy and saw Master Corbius Tall overseeing his Padawan's exercises. Good form, Padawan. Stay focused. Cassius continued to watch the Padawan who soon finished his drills before walking over to Master Tall. That's quite impressive. Cassius, how are you, young one? I'm doing well, Master. I didn't know you'd taken a Padawan. Indeed I have. Padawan, come. I'd like you to meet someone. The boy removed the blast shield helmet from his eyes and walked over to his master's side. Cassius, this is Gaiadom, my apprentice. Cassius looked down at the boy who returned his gaze. That's a very interesting name. I saw your performance over there. Well done. The boy simply nodded and bowed slightly. You'll have to excuse him. He's not very talkative. That's okay. A lot of students aren't very comfortable engaging in conversation at first. I'm sorry to interrupt your training, Master, but I'm looking for Master Drolik. Do you know where he is? I'm sorry. I'm not sure where Master Drolik is at the present. You might try the archives. I know that he was recently seen entering new combat techniques into the database. Okay. I'll try there. Thank you, Master. Good to meet you, Gaidom. The boy simply nodded again before returning to his exercises, as Cassius walked to the archives, looking around for Master Drolik. As luck would have it, he was there, sitting at one of the computers and entering data into the system. Master Drolik turned and saw him walking over. Cassius, good to see you. I trust your mission went well? Very well, Master. Thank you. Listen, I was wondering when we could continue our advanced lessons. Before I left, we had only just begun learning more about Form 5 techniques. I intend to resume my advanced classes soon. However, recent happenings throughout the Republic have taken priority. As it stands now, I have had precious little time to oversee many of my classes. Next week we can resume. For now, I must return to my work. Of course. See you then, Master. Cassius left and made his way to his quarters and closed the door, removing his gear and lying on his bed. He could worry about his classes later. He'd been quite exhausted since returning and felt a short rest would do him well. He hadn't closed his eyes for ten minutes when his comlink began to beep. Grabbing his comlink from the desk, he answered. Hello? Hey, meet me in the usual place. I've got something you might want to see. Okay, I'll be right there. Sitting up from his bed, Cassius put on his tunic and opened his window, crawling out onto the ledge and making his way to the rusty ladder leading to the top of the Jedi Temple. Sarah was there waiting at the ledge. What's up? Without saying another word, Sarah stood and unveiled a second lightsaber from beneath her robe. Oh, wow. You really have been busy training. Yeah. I'd spoken to my master about incorporating a second weapon into my fighting style. He agreed, and so I'd been practicing for months trying to get the feel of it. Now, it's ready for a test. Okay, let's see it. Taking a deep breath, Sarah activated both lightsabers. Two shimmering green blades erupted from their hilts as she crossed them together, weighing them out in each hand. They were perfectly balanced. Tossing one into the air, she spun the other around in a brief flourish before catching the falling saber behind her back. Pretty flashy. Thanks. It was a lot of work, but I did it. Cassie stood next to Sarah and looked at the city. Have you thought of switching things up? Might be a good idea to have an ace up your sleeve. I think I'll stick to what I know best. No need to fix what isn't broken. Sure. So, 
Anything new going on with you? You mean since a few hours ago? Can't say anything drastic has happened since then. Ha uh ha. -huh. No, I mean since the last time I saw you. I know you went on your mission to Ord Mantel, but what else is going on with you? Not a whole lot. I'm a bit concerned about the direction the Republic is heading. War is the last thing we need right now. So you think that a war is coming? I don't know. Anything's possible. This whole debate about military creation definitely has me feeling uneasy. Chancellor Palpatine has been trying to reassure everyone that it won't come to war. I guess that makes me feel a little better, but still. Yeah, I hear you. If it comes to that, though, we'll be ready. Oh, I almost forgot. I got a transmission from Corbin. He and his master are coming back home tomorrow. Really? He didn't tell me. Maybe he wanted it to be a surprise. In which case, sorry. Still, it'll be good to see him again. Yeah, it will. Cassius sat next to Sarah, staring at the far-off Senate building. Sarah, do you think the Senate knows what they're doing? What makes you say that? I don't know, I'm just... I get the feeling that maybe the system we have in place now... It might be the reason so many systems are seceding from the Republic. Politics isn't my strong suit, but I can see where you're coming from. Debates in the Senate seem to cause more division than unity. One system speaks their mind, another system speaks against them, and in the end, it seems only those in the good graces of the Republic seem to be heard. I don't know. It's not my place to be a politician. It's my job to aid the oppressed in the fight against the dark side. I think you're right. I think all these missions away from the temple just have me on edge. Whatever happens, we need to be strong and stick together. You watch my back, I watch yours? That's the idea. A moment later, Cassius comlink beeped again. Hello? Cassius, meet me in the meditation chamber. I have news you may want to hear. Okay. I'll be there in a minute. I gotta go. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Keep me posted if anything happens. Will do. Returning to his room through his window, Cassius went down the steps and through the corridors to the meditation chamber, where Master Takai was standing with her hands crossed behind her back, staring out through the shades covering the window. What's going on, Master? I've received a possible lead as to Dravok's whereabouts. Really? Where is he? I'm afraid the Council has forbidden me from disclosing that information to you, Cassius. They would prefer if you stayed clear of any further engagements with Dravok. Master, after everything he I did- I know, Cassius. I tried to talk to them. I would have preferred to have you by my side for this mission. But I was denied. Mission? Yes. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm leaving for the Outer Rim to begin my investigation. How long will you be gone? At the very least, a month. This is long-term reconnaissance. In my absence, you are to keep up with your daily exercises and training routines. You're improving every day, and I don't want to find that you've been slacking off. Is that clear? Yes, Master. Master Takai walked to Cassius and put her hand on his shoulder. Sometimes I forget how much you've grown over the years. I owe it all to your training, Master. I'm only your teacher, Cassius. You're the one who's taken the initiative to put my teachings to good use. When I return, it may be time to step up your training to prepare you for your trials. Cassius' eyes lit up. You mean it? You think I'm ready? Patience, Padawan. You have a long way to go until you're ready. But I don't think it will be much longer. Keep your chin up and train hard. I've left you some exercises that may help you in my absence. Off you go now. I have to prepare for my trip. Okay. Keep in contact with me. I will, Cassius. Leaving the chamber, Cassius walked to his room and went to sleep, preparing himself for a hard day of exercise and training. He would prove himself to his master and to the council.